Okay, guys, welcome back. Today, we are moving our user detail service from in memory to in our database. So previously, we just took the quickest way to get this working. We implemented an in memory user detail service, meaning we just said, hey, here's a user. It has a name admin and a password of one. That way, anytime we try to authenticate, it's already there. Of course, this is not a very scalable solution. We want our username and passwords to be saved in a database and we retrieve them when necessary. So in a previous video, we did talk about the security filter chain, but there are a few more things we have to talk about. So the first is the authentication manager. So the security filter chain will call the authentication manager to see, hey, does this user have the proper authority to visit this endpoint? And then the authentication manager delegates that task to the user detail service. This is the bean that we injected in our security configuration. But now we're going to be implementing a custom one by extending the user detail service. And this is a very important point. The authentication manager just goes out and finds the user detail service. We, meaning the developer, we never explicitly call this service class or this method. The authentication manager just goes and does it. Okay, here's our to-do list. First, we're going to create a custom user. We're not gonna call it user because user already exists in Spring Boot and we don't wanna mess with it. So we need to run a SQL query to generate our new custom user table. We'll need an entity class, we'll need a repository. You know how to do all these things by now. We're gonna create a service class that is our custom user detail service and we will need to extend Spring Boot's user detail service to make this work. And this will go look in our database to find the user. Then in our security configuration, we need to delete our in-memory user detail service and replace it with an authentication manager, the thing that goes and looks up the user detail service. Then in our controller, we're gonna update our login endpoint to use the authentication manager. And then we need to add a new create new user endpoint to add a new user to the database. It's going to be difficult for us to straight up inject a user using SQL because the password needs to be encoded and that happens through our application. FYI, in the previous two videos, we did implement JSON web tokens and you're going to see this in this video. You don't need to know everything about JSON web tokens to be able to get benefit from this video, but it does help. So once we log in, we will get a JSON web token and we will need that for future requests, which we'll just shove into our authorization header. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first things first, go over to MySQL Workbench and run this query. So create table users, username with a varchar of 50, that will be our primary key, and a password of varchar255, not null. Okay, this next part is going to be rapid fire. You've done this multiple times already. So new Java class, we're calling it custom user. We annotate it with entity. We annotate it with at table and we call it name is equal to users. We're gonna annotate it with at data so it generates our getters and setters. We need an ID, we need a column. The name is gonna be username, private string username. And then our other column, name is equal to password, private string password. Next up, let's do our repository interface. So new Java class, it is an interface, custom user repository. We annotate it with at repository. It extends the JPA repository. And our entity type is a custom user and our unique ID is a string this time. Okay, making our way over to our security configuration, we can go ahead and comment out this bean we're gonna implement our own user detail service. So new Java class, custom user detail service. We will annotate it with at service. And this is really important. It must implement the user detail service from Spring Boot. And go ahead and implement the method. So first off, we need to inject our repository. So at auto wired, private custom user repository, custom user repository. Passed into this method is a string of username. So we're gonna use that to find our user. So custom user, custom user is equal to custom user repository dot find by ID. We pass in the username and then this is an optional. So we'll go ahead and do a get. 
This does throw a username not found exception, so we actually don't have to manage the optional in this case. We then need to return a Spring Boot user. So we're going to return user, the Spring Boot one, with username, and we pass in the custom users get username dot password, custom user dot get password, and then we build it. So the authentication manager will come look for this, find the method, load user by username. Friendly reminder, this is where you would add roles and authorities, and you can do other calls to other parts of your database to find the roles and authorities. For simplicity's sake, we're not implementing that here, but you should be able to do that by now. Okay, back to our security configuration class. Just go ahead and delete this user detail service. We now have our own custom implementation, but we do need a bean for our authentication manager. So at bean, public authentication manager, authentication manager, we pass in HTTP security, and we're going to return HTTP security dot get shared object with authentication manager builder dot class and then we dot build. And this can throw an exception, so I'm just gonna add it to the method. Coming down to our security filter chain, we are going to add a new endpoint. So let's just add auth.requestmatchers slash create new user permit all. So we will allow unauthenticated users to access the create new user endpoint so they can create a new user. Okay, making our way back over to our security controller, we have our post mapping for login. And previously we just did some pseudo validation. Now we're gonna make it real life. So first delete these lines of code. And then we need to inject our authentication manager. So at auto wired, private authentication manager, authentication manager. Coming down into our method, we're gonna call username password authentication token token is equal to new username password authentication token and we pass in the request username and the request password we then say authentication authentication is equal to we call the authentication manager we just injected and then we call dot authenticate and we pass in the token this is different from our json web token we then need to add this to our security context holder so security context holder dot get context dot set authentication and we pass in the authentication. So let's rename our JSON web token to JWT token. Now this can throw an exception. So I'm gonna wrap this logic in a try catch block and we're going to catch the authentication exception. And if an exception is thrown, that's when we're going to return the invalid credentials. Okay, so it's gonna be really difficult to run a SQL query just to add some users to our repository. So we need to create a post mapping to create a new user. So we're gonna say at post mapping slash create new user, public, it will return a response entity, create new user. And we're just gonna copy these parameters straight from the login endpoint. We will need access to the repository, so at auto wired, custom user repository, custom user repository. The first thing we'll do is we'll check to see if this user already exists. So optional custom user, custom user optional is equal to custom user repository dot find by ID, and we pass in the username. And if it's already present in the repository, what we'll do is we'll return response entity dot bad request and we'll say username already exists okay so if it's not already in the repository we can go ahead and create the user so custom user user is equal to new custom user and we're just going to set the username and password to the things that were passed in to the request body however for the password you will need to encode it so we need another injection at auto wired private bcrypt password encoder, encoder. Remember we created a bean for this in our security configuration. We then will call encoder.encode and then we pass in the password. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and save this to the repository. 
and will return a response entity that just says success. And of course, this is just a friendly reminder. You should put all of this logic into a service class. You shouldn't pollute your controller with all of this business logic. Right now, again, we're trying to just show you how it works and do the simplest possible implementation. Okay, go ahead and run your application and make your way over to Postman. So right now in our database, we have no users. So first we need to add a new user. So I created an endpoint, create new user, it is a post. And in the body, we're gonna send this JSON, username of admin and password of one. When I run this, I get a success message. So if we make our way over to MySQL Workbench and do a select star from users, we can see our username and password. And you can see that the password of one was run through the bcrypt password encoder. So now making our way back over to Postman, if we do a post on the login with our username of admin and our password of one, we get back a JSON web token. So let's copy this token and use it to access the product's endpoint, which we do have access to. Let's just confirm what happens if we try to give it an incorrect password. We get an invalid credentials. And if we go back to our create new user endpoint and try to add the same username, we get a username already exists. That's it for this video. Thank you for joining us.